My name is Noelia Rodriguez, and I'm the Managing Director of Communications and Government Relations for the Port of Long Beach. On behalf of the entire port team, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this morning. Many of you attend this event year after year. Some of you, like me, are first timers. And still many of you are watching the live webcast or following us on Twitter at Port of Long Beach. Then, now, and tomorrow. That's our theme this year. It's also when we appreciate your interest, your support, and your partnership. Then, now, and tomorrow. Led by our CEO, John Slangerup, this event is our opportunity to share with the community we serve, our customers, and our local and global partners the story of the challenges and achievements in 2015 and also our exciting outlook for this year and beyond. To get started, please join me and stand so that we can do the Pledge of Allegiance. Hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce some special guests who are with us this morning. Please hold your applause until I've introduced all of them. Our guests today include Congressman Alan Lowenthal, Congresswoman Janice Hahn, Federal Maritime Commissioner Rebecca Dye, State Assembly Member Patrick O'Donnell, Congresswoman Lena Gonzalez, rather Councilwoman Lena Gonzalez, promotion I know of, maybe later, Councilmember Daryl Superna, Councilwoman Susie Price, Councilmember Rex Richardson, City Attorney Charlie Parkin, City Auditor Laura Dowd, City Prosecutor Doug Halbert, Huntington Beach Council members Billy O'Connell and Barbara Del Glaze, and Lake Forest Council member and AQMD board member Dwight Robinson. Also with us this morning are representatives from the offices of U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer, U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein, State Senator Isidore Hall, State Senator Ricardo Lara, Speaker-elect Anthony Rendon, Assemblymember Mike Gibson, Los Angeles County Supervisor Don Kanabi, Vice Mayor Suja Lowenthal, Councilmember Roberto Uranga, Councilmember Al Austin, and Los Angeles Councilmember and AQMD Board Member Joe Buscaino. Welcome and thank you all for your leadership and your public service. Please let's give them a hand. Finally, I'm pleased to introduce to you our Board of Harbor Commissioners. But first, a little background. Let's take a look. Lorianne Guzman, a board member since 2013 and president since July 2015, presides over a board that includes all female officers for the first time in the port's 105-year history. With a strong background in financial management and a master's degree in public administration from Columbia University, President Guzman is committed to increasing workplace diversity and furthering public involvement in the port's planning and decision making. Harbor Commission Vice President Lou Ann Bynum was first appointed to the board in May 2014 and was reappointed and confirmed for a full six-year term in 2015. As Vice President of Development at Long Beach City College, with more than 25 years of experience linking education and training to business and industry needs, she is a vital force in the port's small business and career development programs. Commission Secretary Tracy J. Egoscu is an environmental attorney with a Long Beach-based practice and a former Deputy Attorney General for the State of California. 
Appointed in September 2014, her experience complements our Greenport policy to foster innovative technologies and practices that benefit future generations by improving air, water, and soil quality, protecting wildlife habitat, and delivering zero emissions. A former two-term Long Beach City Councilman, Vice Mayor, and Police Commander, Doug Drummond has served Long Beach for more than 45 years. Appointed to the Commission in 2011, he has served two terms as President. Last year, Commissioner Drummond spearheaded the creation of Port Town, a comprehensive history book telling the story of how the people of Long Beach built, defended, and profited from their harbor. Appointed in 2011, Commissioner Rich Dines is a Marine clerk with the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, bringing with him more than 15 years of experience on the waterfront. He has been instrumental in the development and adoption of a groundbreaking energy policy and is actively involved with efforts to increase port productivity, including chairing a committee to identify leading practices to improve efficiency and velocity. I'd like to ask our board members to stand. They are seated over to my right here. And please recognize them for their dedication and service to the Port of Long Beach. And now, I'd like to introduce our president, President Lorianne Guzman. President Guzman has served as Long Beach. I'm not done. She needs an awesome introduction, please. <laughs> President Guzman has served as Long Beach City Controller, then as the city's first female fin chief financial officer, later as the Long Beach Transit Board member. And now she is the Harbor Commission President, a post she has held since July of last year, which by the way, was my first day on the job. So very memorable for me and very, very memorable for our awesome president. Please welcome President Lorianne Guzman. Thank you, Noelia. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us today. I am so very pleased to be here this morning. It has truly been an honor to serve this incredible city. And I'd like to thank my very talented commission colleagues for their hard work, their dedication, and commitment. As you saw in the introductions, this is a truly amazing team of professionals and it's a real pleasure to work with these commissioners because each of them brings a wealth of knowledge and experience that adds greatly to the port. Together, we set the overall policy and the strategic direction for the Harbor Department. And as you'll see this morning, based on the input we've received from you, our customers, we are reaping significant dividends for the port and the community. Each commissioner works many long hours. And so at this time, I'd like to take a short pause to recognize my city manager in Huntington Beach, Fred Wilson, for his unwavering support of my service to the port. <laughs> 2015 has been a landmark year for the port in so many ways and we can't wait to share our accomplishments and our vision for the years ahead. Because here, at the Port of Long Beach, we are known throughout the world for thinking outside the box. Excuse the pun. We are global leaders in setting new trends. We are global leaders in automating terminal operations. We are global leaders in environmental sustainability and we are global leaders in community activism. And, this is my personal favorite, we are global leaders in promoting the role of women in international trade. In fact, many of you may know this by now, but this year our board achieved its first female majority in its 105 year history. And if you think about that, that's a century 
that went by without an all-female majority, so it's quite an accomplishment. First, let's start with the recognition we have recently received here at the Port of Long Beach. The Port earned numerous awards of all types last year, 22 awards. And these achievements are even more special because they highlight the respect of our peers throughout the nation and the globe. I want to mention just a couple of awards that reflect our innovation and creativity. We received the Best Information Technology Award for our virtual port security program. We received the Best Environmental Improvement Award for our West Anaheim Street Improvement Project. But the awards don't stop there. We also received, and this is another personal favorite, the Best Seaport in All of North America Award from Asia Cargo News, along with too many others to mention. It's important to note that none of these achievements could have been possible without the guidance of the Board of Harbor Commissioners and the outstanding work of the staff at the Port of Long Beach. So please join me in giving them a round of applause. We work hard to keep Long Beach on the forefront from our world-renowned environmental initiatives and our investment in capital projects to our active engagement with the community and with our business partners. We're proud to be building what is widely considered the port of the future. Our work extends far beyond Long Beach's city limits, however. We've been to Sacramento and Washington, D.C. to meet with our elected officials so that we could secure funding for our many projects and to promote legislation that supports our port. We have also crisscrossed the globe and traveled overseas to many wonderful places, and I've made so many friends while I've traveled across the globe in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Qingdao, France, Switzerland, Denmark, Korea, great Korean barbecue, Taiwan, Japan, Singapore, and most recently to Chile and Peru, where we were accompanied by our distinguished mayor, Dr. Robert Garcia, to tell our story to our current and potential new business partners. The story that we're sharing around the globe is the envy of other ports our $4 billion capital program. I'll repeat, our $4 billion, with a B, dollar capital program is absolutely unmatched in all of North America. Our nearly $100 million Greenport Rail project is now complete, adding six miles of new train tracks while reducing dirty emissions and providing cleaner air. We'll hear more about the port's future shortly, but I'm sure you can understand the excitement we all feel about these incredible projects and the impact that they'll make on our industry. We love Long Beach, and we're proud to call this beautiful city home. We carefully balance the port's business growth with our duty to promote a cleaner environment for generations to come. And that's really important to someone like me who has four children that we're raising right here in Long Beach. Last year, we hit one of our highest cargo volumes ever, while still enjoying water quality not seen in the region for decades. And so I'd like to share this personal anecdote. I was invited by Tom Jacobson, the CEO of Jacobson Pilot, to board onto the MSC Elodi. It's a very large uh, container vessel, 10,000 containers, and I had never done that before. To watch how these men skillfully navigate this massive vessel into the narrow channels to get it back into the, the backlands of the port. And aside from the terror that I felt when I had to hoist myself and propel myself from a small boat to get onto the side of this massive vessel that had a teeny tiny rope ladder on it, I did a very good Spider-Man impression that day, it was an amazing, amazing experience. Because while we were on that vessel, we were, they were navigating it into the channels. Abruptly, out of nowhere, a sea lion emerged from the water. 
and completely stopped the ship in its tracks as it wedged itself right between the ship and the berth to take a swim and calm, calmly gazing at the sun. This was an incredibly magical moment because it's that moment where there's an intersection between nature and business, between the interests of trade and the environment, and they were able to coincide beautifully as opposed to it being a catastrophic connection. Now, that's not to say that we didn't hose down Senor Leon to move him along his way with some water from a neighboring tugboat so that the ship could go to birth, but it was an incredible, incredible opportunity and experience to see all of the wildlife that has returned to the region. About 150 different species of marine life have returned to our harbor district because of the efforts here at the Port of Long Beach. <laughs> this strong commitment to the environment makes us very proudly the green port, and we're known as the green port throughout the world. And it sets Long Beach apart as we inspire others to follow a similar model. And I've mentioned this to other audiences before. In traveling to Latin America, uh, there, I attended the Latin American Congress of Ports in Argentina last year, and so many other countries and so many other port complexes in other countries are following the model right here from the port of Long Beach. There is a port in Chile that is calling, its now, calling itself now El Puerto Verde, and that is because of the work that we're doing here at the port of Long Beach and setting global trends. While we've achieved so much in the decade since we launched our green port policy, there is no stopping us now. Every project we approve and every action we take reaffirms our respect for the environment and the community we serve, and we've only just begun. The port has also made a strong commitment to local economic development. In fact, we support one in eight jobs, or 30,000 right here in Long Beach, and 300 jobs throughout Southern California. But our economy is global, and the port's success is reflected all around the world as shippers, cargo owners, and terminal operators clearly see that this port, this port, the port of Long Beach, is the place to be. We also invest directly in our community. Last year alone, we committed over $1 million to community sponsorships and programs focused on a wide array of projects from the education, system to the arts. And in recent years, we've funded over $17 million in 170 different programs that have improved the health of almost half a million of our most vulnerable residents here in Long Beach. From schools to community centers to hospitals, these projects have directly helped those who need it most. And last summer, Another of my personal favorites, we also provided jobs for over 25 high school students and awarded more than $50,000 in scholarships. We held our fifth annual Women in Trade event, and thank you to all of the sponsors here in the audience that have partnered with us to make that possible which introduces young women to careers in our industry. And this morning, we have a very special treat. We're joined by over 100 Poly High and California Academy of Math and Science high school students who are learning firsthand how the port may be a part of their future. They're joined by their teachers, Libby Huff and Nancy Brown, and we thank you for your interest in the port. And if you would please stand, the students in the audience, and if you would please join me in a round of applause for these amazing young students. We are so proud to be preparing the next generation of leaders for the port, this city, and beyond. The port also strongly supports diversity, and this is something that I feel very passionately about and is very near and dear to my heart. And we support 
equal opportunity for everyone, not just a few, not just the well-connected, not just the wealthy. And we are committed to helping especially small business and very small business enterprises to thrive right here in Long Beach. Many are minority or women-owned firms, and our support adds to our diversity. And it deepens the investment that we're making in all parts of the community so that no one stays behind. I'm proud to report that last year, we not only met, but we exceeded our 25% goal as it relates to very small and small business enterprises, and we're very proud of that. Partnering with the city is also a top priority, and our board has approved plans for a new port headquarters as part of the new iconic downtown Civic Center project, which we're all very excited about. We're all looking forward to being back downtown with the mayor and city council, and I just wanted to thank the mayor and city council for their leadership and their vision as it relates to this very exciting new Civic Center project. Your Board of Harbor Commissioners is so proud to lead the Port of Long Beach, and prouder still to make a difference in the city we love. You can probably sense my enthusiasm as we share our accomplishments with you, and we hope you're just as excited about the years ahead. Thank you again for joining us this morning. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your business. And thank you for your support. We understand that many of you have invested millions of dollars in new technology to make sure that we meet our Clean Air Action Plan goals. And I just wanted to thank you once again for that. And now, what we've all been waiting for, is time for this year's State of the Port address focused on then, now, and tomorrow. John Slangerup joined us just a year and a half ago, and so much has happened since then, but it's been an incredible 18 months. This time last year, times were tough for the port, but thanks to John's leadership and perseverance, we survived those days, and now we have much to celebrate. Like you, I'm looking forward to hearing John's update and his view for the Port of the Future. So please join me in welcoming the Port of Long Beach's amazing, incredibly talented rock star, Chief Executive John Slangerup. Well, good morning, everybody. Feels like a room full of friends, and it is. I think I've met most of you over the course of the last 18 months, and it's been what a, what a great time. But thanks again for spending your time with us this morning, and we have a lot to, uh, to share. You know, last January, as President Guzman alludes to, um, this meeting was had a little bit different tone. We found ourselves in an epic struggle with congestion, severe congestion and gridlock. What I want to do is take a moment to reflect on 2015 and what was a very painful and public meltdown of our supply chain, along with the extraordinary turnaround and recovery that followed. So if you don't mind, let's take a look at this video. What has created this perfect storm? Why so much congestion? So we're seeing ripple effects across the U.S. economy. Automakers are taking a hit. Uh, we just heard from Honda saying that they are cutting U.S. output because they simply can't get auto, the auto parts they need. In Long Beach, one in eight jobs are associated with the port. What sort of impact is this having on the jobs picture? If the issues are only minor, why does this seem like a colossal problem? How soon could we see the issue resolved? So. How frustrated are you? How important are these ports to the U.S. economy, and are we seeing it show up elsewhere? The impact since, in the last six months, the impact has been over a trillion dollars. Well, we'll see some numbers this, uh, this month that might uh, be pretty enlightening.
So typically we have this big peak in the fall for holiday goods and so forth. It's been strong and steady uh, since March. Well, I know it's a cliche, but what a difference a year can make. The video we just saw did a great job of summing up our extraordinary journey together over the past year at the Port of Long Beach. All of you, make no mistake, all of you made this turnaround possible through extraordinarily hard work and new approaches to communicating and collaborating, along with innovative solutions and a fierce determination to regain our momentum and rebuild the trust of our stakeholders and customers. Terminal operators, longshore workers, truckers, ocean carriers, railroads, beneficial cargo owners, brokers and freight forwarders, contractors, and many others worked tirelessly throughout 2015 at the Port of Long Beach to achieve something for the record books. So please give yourselves a big round of applause for making this past year an amazing display of teamwork and turnaround success. And speaking of teamwork, I want to acknowledge some other folks that have made this day and the entire past year possible. First, thanks to all the wonderful wait staff and others that put together this excellent breakfast. Give them applause. I also want to acknowledge our mayor, Mayor Garcia, and our elected officials and harbor commissioners who helped navigate the port through some very difficult, uncharted waters, making key decisions at critical moments to keep our momentum going and have the kind of year we had. I personally want to thank our harbor commissioners for the countless hours generously given to our port. We have relied on your guidance, your advice, strategic direction, and effective governance of the port operations. Please give, give all of our leaders another warm round of applause. I also want to really comment on the people behind the scenes that make this thing happen every day. I want you to know how proud I am of our port employees, a team which works tirelessly to support our customers and our stakeholders as we build a complex here in the port that is second to none. It is a true privilege for me to work with this team, a group of people as responsive innovative and collaborative, and a team that has proven, proven itself under pressure throughout the entire year. A remarkable group. The past year, we ran like mad to keep up with ever-changing conditions in the marketplace. And as we expanded the port's capabilities, we recruited and promoted the best and the brightest to ensure our ability to compete globally. This includes quadrupling the number of women we have in director level positions and above in the port. I agree. Our senior management team is now in place, and they fully reflect the diversity of the workforce they lead. Please join me in congratulating again the Port of Long Beach employees for their outstanding achievements this past year. So I stand here today a little bit different circumstances than a year ago. Thanks to everyone here, the Port of Long Beach just delivered its biggest year since 2007. <laughs> Taking us back to 2007 pre-recession levels of volume. Our port handled about 7.2 million TEUs which is only the third time in our 105-year history that we've exceeded 7 million TEUs. Through December, our year-over-year -year volume growth was 5.4%, nearly double that 
of the U.S. economy in 2015. During July and August, Long Beach achieved record cargo numbers, resulting in the port's biggest quarter in its entire history. More than 2 million TEUs moved through the port in the third quarter alone. Although we saw record volumes through our peak season, we experienced no chronic congestion problems. We had a remarkable achievement in comparing it to the same time last year. In fact, trucking queues from its height dropped about by a third, while rail fluidity and velocity reached record levels of performance. And perhaps most satisfying was the fact that in the back half of the year, we began gaining market share. After losing market share for four years in a row. At the same time, the media, who were quite critical of us, began retracting their obituaries of Long Beach as our performance continued to accelerate and the East Coast began reversing their earlier gains. So how and why did this happen? Well, let's start with the how. First, the agreement reached last February between the ILWU and the PMA, which was helped along by Labor Secretary Tom Perez, opened the door for rapid recovery of our congested terminals. While we were predicting it would take three months for us to fully recover, actually operations took half the time, just six weeks to clear the backlog of ships at anchor and begin to approach pre-congestion levels of throughput and system fluidity. Terminal operations and longshore labor delivered extraordinarily high levels of productivity with record-setting gains throughout the entire year. It only took months, not years, for our terminals to regain their status as the most productive container terminals in the world based on the Journal of Commerce's own reported container vessel moves. As the labor negotiations were going on, we had already been working for several months with the three primary chassis providers, DCLI, Flexivan, and Track. We worked with them to create an interoperable chassis pool of pools. This was a joint effort with the uh, Port of Los Angeles, and in March, the pool of pools was launched with an immediate positive impact on operations, and the work continues every day to continually improve that. At the same time this was going on, Long Beach engaged a sweeping new initiative called Supply Chain Optimization. We call it SCO for short. Los Angeles agreed to participate in a joint port effort, and, and together we sought and received authority from the Federal Maritime Commission to launch our SCO initiative. Last April, Gene Soroka and I conducted our first SCO meetings with stakeholder, stakeholders throughout the supply chain, many of whom are actually represented right here in this room today. I want to thank the FMC. I want to thank the Port of Los Angeles. And I want to thank all of our stakeholders for being such incredible partners in this SEO initiative. Thank you. Our SEO mission is daunting. We're working to create a marine supply chain that provides end-to-end -end visibility of containerized cargo moves from origin to destination. We are beginning to optimize efficiency, minimize costs, and continually improve the speed to market of goods moving through our port complex. We're doing this by employing advanced technologies, processes, and metrics. Since last April, the port staff has facilitated nearly 50 standing room only meetings and conference calls with our stakeholders. 
We are addressing peak operations, chassis availability, terminal optimization, rail capacity, trucking operations, data management and integration, as well as other key performance indicators. And we're excited about this because we're going to continue this even more aggressively in 2016. I know all of this is a mouthful, but honestly, this is exactly what we have to do to fulfill our mission. The committed involvement of our stakeholders in the SEO process has been nothing short of inspirational. While we were engaging SEO, our Long Beach team also initiated an aggressive outreach program to directly address the concerns of our beneficial cargo owners and win back their business and their confidence. During the year, our commercial operations team and I traveled the globe along with some of our board members. We spoke with more than 300 BCOs, ocean carriers, and trade associations, explaining what went wrong, how we were fixing things, and encouraging their participation in SEO gatherings. As a result, many of these stakeholders met face to face for the very first time. Clearly, it was a tough sell to win back the BCO business, and we're still working on it. We need to regain the full trust of the shipping community after what happened a year ago. Nevertheless, as the port demonstrated its ability to rebound and change from the congestion crisis, and with our stakeholders actively engaged in our SEO initiatives, we began to see the volumes start to rebound. And as you can see from this chart, the gains were strong and steady. So that, in part, answers how we turn things around. But perhaps a bigger question is, why did the volume rebound so quickly and to record levels? That answer lies in understanding the compelling nature of the port's value proposition. Long Beach offers the shortest, fastest, and most cost-effective gateway for movement of seaborne goods from Asia to America's entire major consumer marketplace. Our deep water marine terminals handle the world's largest ships, employ the greenest and most productive technologies available, and speed goods to market through North America's most extensive intermodal transportation infrastructure. Simply put, the cost of diverting Trans-Pacific container volume to the East Coast or Gulf ports, either through the Suez or Panama Canal, adds to total transportation costs and increases transit time to market by 20 to 40 percent. And as we all know, time is money. Cargo diversion to the East Coast last year cost our BCO partners millions of dollars per day. And they returned to Long Beach as soon as they felt confident that operations were back to normal. In my view, so long as we protect our value proposition and enhance our business operations, we have little to fear from other ports or the Panama Canal stealing our jobs based on the cargo that drives economic growth. Not to mention that over half the container vessels currently on order will not fit through the new expanded Panama Canal. They are going to be coming here. So our collective efforts to prepare the port complex for the mega ships beginning to call here is starting to pay off. For example, in just a few weeks, CMA CGM's new 18,000 TU container vessel, the Benjamin Franklin, will call Long Beach. This megaship, which is the largest to call North America, will berth at our own Pacific Container Terminal. So just what does mega mean? Let's take a look at this.
Well, that's a lot of shoes, I got to say. I know my wife is happy about this. And the exciting part is we get to host CMA CGM's christening of the Benjamin Franklin while the ship is in port on February 19th. Another major milestone for the Port of Long Beach. I also want to mention our commitment to security. As the world becomes increasingly subject to physical and cyber threats, it creates an urgent need and vigilance for all of us to protect the people in our care and the infrastructure assets that we're responsible for. The port has invested hundreds of millions of dollars to fulfill this mission, and we will continue to do so. Our security team and our Joint Command and Control Center that we share with our various city, state, and federal agency partners stands as a strong reminder of our commitment to protecting the port and its people. Please join me in thanking our men and women in uniform for their service and bravery. Our virtual port system is a modern marvel of surveillance, interdiction, and interagency communications technology. As well, the first of two new fireboats recently arrived and is currently being commissioned. And it's a big boat. I know the, my friends in the fire department are excited about this. These assets directly support our readiness for the mega ships arriving this year at our port. So where do we go from here? In considering the future, we can look to the past for inspiration. The Port of Long Beach has a long legacy of leadership and board governance, which has effectively anticipated future events, which were translated into market strategies and capital investments. Just within the last 10 years or so, the port established the landmark green port and energy policies and authorized the spending of billions of dollars for advanced technologies, terminal redevelopment, expanded rail capacity, a new bridge, upgraded road infrastructure, and the list goes on and on. But with everything we do, we carefully balance the needs for growth with our obligation to environmental sustainability. This sets Long Beach apart from everyone else in our industry as we seek to inspire others to follow our same path. Today, our board and leadership team are working together to take Long Beach to the next level. We are currently developing our new long-range strategic plan based on our recently updated cargo forecast, which is quite an exciting forecast, and our land use study, and a wide range of other competitive and macroeconomic data. This includes understanding the shifts in global economics, manufacturing, and related trade patterns, particularly within Asia and Latin America. Also, what impact, if any, will the widened Panama Canal have on our business? And of course, we're carefully studying the mergers and acquisitions that all of us are so keenly aware taking place among several ocean carriers while assessing the impacts of known and potential changes to the various vessel sharing alliances. As part of this process, we're evaluating the next wave of investments in energy and environmental technologies, advanced terminal infrastructure, and systems which enhance security and information management. Our new strategic planning process is based on a rolling 10-year model, which delivers an annual business plan with quarterly board reviews. Given the highly dynamic nature of the business we're all in, our, our ability to assess plans on a quarterly basis and make adjust, adjustments as needed 
is absolutely vital to staying agile. Currently, we are in the middle of executing our 2016 business plan, including the 10-year, $4 billion capital improvement program where we're developing Middle Harbor, replacing the Gerald Desmond Bridge, and doubling the capacity of our on-dock rail system, along with several other dozen small to large capital infrastructure projects. So I want to share with you now a short video of our progress. As you saw, one of our major infrastructure projects is a billion-dollar expansion of our on-dock rail system, driving capacity increases throughout our port complex. During the past year, we increased on-dock rail capacity from 23 to nearly 30 percent, with our goal of increasing capacity to 50 percent within the next 10 years. Of course, I'm pushing for sooner than that. On-dock rail, make no mistake, is a key investment for us and a critical environmental initiative for reducing truck congestion and related air pollution. Every train that we move off the port eliminates between 750 and 1,000 truck trips, which not only relieves truck congestion on our port and on our adjacent road structures, but it also significantly increases air quality. As well, the $1.5 billion Gerald Desmond Bridge replacement project is moving forward rapidly, achieving visible milestones on what seems like a daily basis. The two main towers are beginning to rise out of the ground, currently at about 80 feet high, on their way to their maximum 515-foot height. When done, this iconic bridge will be the tallest structure on the Long Beach skyline. And with variable LED lighting, it will be visible for miles in all directions. And with the bridge rising 205 feet above the water below, not only will it allow the megaships to pass underneath, but it'll be a major draw for pedestrian traffic and cyclists using the bridge's special lanes for, for people and for bikes to get breathtaking views for everything for miles around. The new bridge is on schedule to start handling three lanes of westbound traffic by the end of next year, with both east and westbound lanes open for traffic by the end of 2018. The new bridge will better handle the 15% 
of America's cargo volume that rolls across it. Now let's turn to Middle Harbor. This $1.3 billion redevelopment project reached a key milestone last October when we released phase one to Long Beach Container Terminal for operational testing. Middle Harbor is the world's first all-electric, zero-emission automated mega terminal. I'd like you to take a look. And this is happening now. Let's take a closer look. How cool is that? That is one big electric car. LBCT expects to complete all systems and operational testing, as well as workforce training, in time to launch full commercial operations in the second quarter of this year. Phase one will add about 10% more container capacity to the Port of Long Beach and provide LBCT with the capability of handling up to 18,000 TEU vessels. When phase two comes online in 2019, Middle Harbor will add another 10% capacity to the port with the capability to handle, and get this, up to 24,000 TU vessels. When fully operational, LBCT will have the capacity to handle at least 3.3 million TUs per year, making this terminal by itself one of America's, actually North America's, largest ports. Just a phenomenal project. I spoke earlier about the port's legacy of leadership and governance, which guides and inspires our port today. This legacy drives our commitment to the community of Long Beach, as well as the surrounding region throughout the Southland, from both an economic and environmental sustainability perspective. We feel so fortunate to be part of a city with such strong leadership, starting with Mayor Garcia and our wonderful city council, and extending to local, state, and federal representatives, many here today, who understand and are committed to the su success of our port. I want to join you in thanking all of our elected officials once more. And as President Guzman mentioned, I also thank the Long Beach Civic Center Project, which we're so proud to be part of, will be the ultimate demonstration of community and harmony. When completed in 2019, the City Hall and the Port Headquarters will stand side by side as a permanent reminder of the inseparable link between the City and its port. Not to mention it's going to be great to be back downtown overlooking the harbor where we belong. Not only does the port represent a major economic engine for Long Beach and Southern California, it also represents a driving force behind continuous improvements in air and water quality. As we have steadily grown our business in the recent years, 
we have dramatically reduced harmful pollutants. As you can see from this chart, we have greatly reduced air emissions across the board, the most significant health-related risk being diesel particulate matter, which we've reduced over 85 percent. I agree. In fact, we've already achieved our emissions reduction targets based on the state's 2023 attainment goals. So now we're focused on achieving the state's 2050, 2050 emission reduction goals. So here's how we're approaching it. First, we're working with our partners at the Port of Los Angeles on our joint Clean Air Action Plan, or CAP for short. This will be the third phase of CAP and will focus on the next generation of technologies needed to achieve our goal of a zero emission port operation. CAP will have a direct tie-in to our SEO initiative because, quite frankly, every step we take in improving operational efficiency directly improves air quality. In Long Beach, we are well ahead of the game with projects like Middle Harbor, on dock rail, as well as our technology advancement program, which we call TAP, and the related ETAP program, which puts energy on the front of that, which is focused obviously on clean energy technologies. One recent TAP success story was our investment in the Amex project, which was developed right here in Long Beach. Amex stands for Advanced Maritime Emissions Control System and is used as an alternative to ship-to-shore electrical plug-in power, which we call, obviously, cold ironing. Amex was recently approved by the California Air Resources Board as a certified alternative to cold ironing, which now allows ships not equipped with shore power to achieve cold ironing compliance. As well, our energy island concept which we introduced here last year, envisions transforming our port into an integrated network of microgrids, generating clean, sustainable power and water throughout the port and for essential city operations. Energy Island has the potential to deliver major environmental benefits, long-term stable energy costs, and operational resiliency against unplanned or catastrophic grid outages. Energy Island is well into the research and planning phase, and our stakeholder advisory board, which includes all the major environmental uh, organizations and providers of energy, is working with us to define the scope and viability of this concept and bring this before the board for discussion as a recommendation this year. While TAP focuses on mitigating mobile sources of pollution like, obviously, ships, trucks, and trains, ETAP will focus on evaluating advanced technologies for renewable power generation, lighting, energy storage, and everything else related to the air quality and water quality of our port. ETAP will play a significant role in our business as we pursue CAP and future projects like Energy Island. And we'll also focus on developing the next generation of fuels for ships, trucks, trains, and the port of the future. Take a look. A worldwide leader. The most productive and skilled workforce anywhere in the world. Economic engine, green, and people power. Cleaner trucks, fewer truck trips, cleaner rail. The fastest turn times anywhere in the world. A place where everyone wins. The Port of the Future is a port that invests in technology, in green innovation, and respects the communities that surround it. But most importantly, the Port of the Future is a port that always thinks about the people that work there and the people in the neighborhoods around the port. The Port of the Future will be exemplified by cleaner technology, high-wage specialized labor, and greater efficiency. 
These elements will keep ports competitive for years to come. We're going to be moving cargo faster, more efficiently, and with higher velocity than ever before. The Port of the Future integrates economic and environmental objectives so everyone is a winner. This is a winning combination that will make the Port of Long Beach truly the Port of the Future. But most importantly, the Port of the Future, no matter how much is invested in innovation, is always centered around the people of the port, the people that work there and the people it serves. How great was that? Elizabeth, wherever you are, Bobby, Mayor Garcia, of course, and Secretary Kelly, thank you so much for taking a moment to share those thoughts and those challenges with us. This is exactly what the Port of the Future is about. So what we're building today is a model that represents the Port of the Future. Through collaboration with our customers and our stakeholders, all represented here, we are developing and deploying the cleanest technology available anywhere. The way we ultimately pay for these environmental technologies will be through continuous efficiency and productivity improvements that increase the speed and reliability of goods movement through our port complex. We firmly believe that economic and, envi and environmental sustainability are two sides of the same coin. And doing right things right preserves both capital and protects lives. We are already leading out on most critical demonstrations of the Port of the Future. Our CAP initiative, supply chain optimization, Middle Harbor, Energy Island, on-dock rail expansion. They're all down payments on the next generation of policies, processes, technologies, and capital investments that will propel us towards our vision of a carbon neutral, zero emission future, resulting in the greenest, most efficient, and reliable seaport anywhere in the world. You know, in the final analysis, it boils down to three things, vision, courage, and leadership. And all of these attributes are extremely well represented in this room. It was a vision of those before us that got us here. We now need the courage to think in new ways and make bold decisions that fly in the face of convention. We will need the leadership to challenge and inspire others to dramatically improve the way this industry does business. Together, all of us have the opportunity to transform the Port of Long Beach from merely a world-class port to the world's best port. I couldn't be more excited about our future, our future together, or to be more proud to be part of this extraordinary port community. Welcome to the Port of the Future, and thank you very, very much.